Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a quick preview of some of the latest news coming up today. Two officers from Northumberland, Thailand's immigration suspended, asking for cash to speed up a visa process. Former Thailand Prime Minister Shinok Shinawatra, now a fugitive living in exile since she was removed from office in May 2014, responds to the allegations just served upon her. Over to Vietnam now and Da Nang is banning the arrival of tourists for 14 days and is evacuating 80,000 people, mostly local tourists from the central city, due to an outbreak of the Chinese coronavirus. Hello, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and some other stories coming right up. Two immigration officers suspended, asking for cash to speed up a visa process. Two officers from Northumbria Immigration Office have been suspended after a viral video exposing an officer asking a foreigner for special money to help speed up the visa process. Complaints were reported about a viral Facebook post. The Facebook user captioned the post, This is real. Such a shame. To when will the cheating stop? The Post then further explained the video. Foreigners get visa to work in the country. They go to the Northumbria Immigration for an application. The papers were submitted and the officer told the foreigner that if he wanted the application to be completed fast, then it would take 20,000 Thai baht. The officer then put the money in his pocket. Northumbria Immigration should stop cheating the country's foreigners. Immigration Division 3 stated that an investigation committee was formed to find out the truth in Northumbria immigration officers. As a result, two immigration officers have been suspended. Orders have been given to take the matter seriously with justice. If the officers connected to the incident are guilty, then they will meet disciplinary action and legal punishment. Commissioner General of the Thai Police has always made sure that police work must be done with fairness to the people according to the law. The people must be able to rely on the police and officials must not act like thieves by using their powers in a wrong way. Police Deputy Commissioner General has received orders to enforce strict measures on the Immigration Bureau to never let the incident repeat itself in the future. Immigration officers will now have to carefully watch their actions, especially when it concerns foreigners who have chosen Thailand out of all the countries in the world as their location to visit, work or live in. And may I add, if you choose to live or work in Thailand, you must understand and accept all elements of their culture, such as it may offend your senses of fair play. But this applies worldwide, does it not? So it's your choice. And don't forget one thing, these sort of antics happen all over the world, so let's not just pick on Thailand's immigration. Bali to reopen to international tourists on September the 11th. Bali Governor Wayan Costa has announced that the world famous resort island will reopen its borders for international tourists on September the 11th under strict health protocol. Costa explained that the Bali administration had prepared three phase plan on relaxing restrictions to welcome tourists to the island. The first phase started on July the 9th when the administration began reopening local businesses and tourist spots for the residents of Bali. We'll start the second phase on July the 31st by reopening tourism for domestic tourists, Costa said. The third phase would be launched on September the 11th. We'll open our borders for international tourism. The governor explained that his administration had set up a health protocol at tourist destinations and other public places to curb transmission of the highly contagious Chinese coronavirus. We would also require international tourists to be tested negative for coronavirus prior to their trip. International tourists would be required to provide negative Chinese coronavirus test results that are valid for two weeks in accordance with the circular issued by the transportation minister, he said. Tourism in Bali has been hit hard by the global pandemic, which has cut off travel to the island, hence the sharp decline in this year. 
Costa said international tourists visiting Bali contributed to 41% of the country's tourism revenue. Indonesia's president previously urged regional administrations to ensure that tourism in the new normal era provided tourists with safety and comfort so they would stay longer and spend more. Costa said it in 2019, 6.3 million international tourists travelled to Bali, accounting for 39% of international tourism in the country. However, we don't want to focus solely on international tourists, since the potential for local tourists is also great, Costa said. Bali had recorded 3,058 cases of Chinese coronavirus, consisting of 3,036 locals and 22 foreigners. The province has seen 2,321 recoveries and 48 deaths. Foreign Minister Li Zhengzhou, Wolf Warrior of China. China's new army of tough-talking diplomats. Once upon a time, China's statecraft, discreet and enigmatic. Henry Kissinger, the former US Secretary of State, wrote in his seminal study, Diplomacy, that Beijing diplomacy was so subtle and indirect that it largely went over our heads in Washington. Governments in the West employed sinologists to interpret the opaque signals emanating from the Chinese Politburo. Under its former leader, Deng Xiaoping, the country's declared strategy was to hide its inability and bide its time. Well, not anymore. China has dispatched an increasingly vocal candor of diplomats out into the world of social media to take on all comers with, at times, an eye-blinking frankness. Their aim is to defend China's handling of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic and challenge those who question Beijing's version of the event. So they launch salvos of persistent tweets and posts from the embassies around the world. And they hold little back, deploying sarcasm, aggression in equal measures. Such is the novelty of their techniques that they have been dubbed Wolf Warriors after the very popular action film in China. Wolf Warrior and Wolf Warrior 2 are hugely popular movies in which elite Chinese special forces take on American-led mercenaries and other no-do-wells. They are violent, extremely nationalistic in tone. One critic dubbed them Rambo with Chinese characteristics. A promotional poster shows a picture of the central character raising his middle finger with the slogan, anyone who offends China, no matter how remote, must be exterminated. In recent editorial of the Chinese Communist Party's new paper, Global Times declared that people were no longer satisfied with flaccid diplomatic tone and said the West feels challenged by Chinese new wolf warrior diplomacy. Yes, a new kind of language. Perhaps the quintessential wolf warrior is Li Zhanzhao, China's young foreign affairs spokesman. He is the official who made the unsubstantiated claim that the United States may have brought the Chinese coronavirus into Wuhan and later apologised for the statement saying he was jealous and upset and wanted to hit back. He really did apologise and said that. He has more than 600,000 followers on Twitter. He exploits the audience almost by the hour, relentlessly tweeting, retweeting and liking everything that promotes and defends China. This is of course what diplomats anywhere in the world must do. It is their job to promote their country's national interests. But few diplomats use language that is, well, is so undiplomatic. Take the Chinese ambassador to India, which described calls for China to pay compensation for spreading the Chinese coronavirus as ridiculous and eyeball-catching nonsense. Former PM Shinlak Shinawatra, now a fugitive living in exile since she was removed from office in May 2014 by a constitutional court decision, cooked to Facebook yesterday to respond to allegations of abuse of power brought by the National Anti-Corruption Commission earlier this week, calling on the anti-craft body to focus on the current government instead. On Wednesday, the NACC announced it had evidenced the former Premier and two senior colleagues 
committed offences and abused their authority during a 2013 public relations campaign. She took to her official Shinlaka Shinawatra Facebook page on Thursday and questioned why the NACC was quick to process two cases against her when it should instead be scrutinising the current administration's activities. Politicians or former politicians who oppose the government are suspected of committing offences, while those in power are always innocent. The NACC said Wednesday there's evidence indicating that Shinlaka her Secretary-General and her Deputy PM violated the law in the submission of contract bids to state agencies. The alleged offence related to the building of the Future of Thailand 2020 project, which was worth 240 million baht and launched in 2013 by the Secretary of the Prime Minister. Her former Deputy PM said yesterday the campaign was in line with Shinlock's government policies that were declared in Parliament. Yinlok Sinawatra was overthrown by her trusty general at the time, General Pratyut Chinachar, former leader of the National Council for Peace and Order. On May the 14th, Priyat staged a military coup against the government and assumed control of the country. The military joined which governed Thailand between 2014 and 2019. Priyat Chinacha became Prime Minister of Thailand following the 2019 Thai general elections, which many Thai nationals say was rigged. But that's okay, he's found a new dance partner now. The U.S. Embassy donated Chinese coronavirus face masks to Chiang Rai province. Despite the country not having any local Chinese coronavirus cases for two months, the representatives of the U.S. Embassy delivered the Chinese coronavirus face mask worth 14,500 U.S. to the authorities in Chiang Rai. Regional Consul General Sean O'Neill said the U.S. government wanted to help provide the protection to the hill tribe people that live in the remote mountains, he said. We are honoured that the Thai authorities trust us to help provide this equipment. Thailand, which began strict containment and lockdown measures in March, hasn't recorded any local transmission of the virus in over 60 days. By contrast, the US had recorded 4.3 million infections and suffered 149,398 deaths as of today the highest in the world and seen protests against lockdowns, restrictions and the use of masks. Vietnam is evacuating 80,000 people, mostly local tourists, from the central city of Da Nang after three residents tested positive to the Chinese coronavirus at the weekend, the government has said. The evacuation will take at least four days, with domestic airlines operating approximately 100 flights daily from Da Nang to 11 Vietnamese cities, the government said in a statement. Now Da Nang is banning the arrival of tourists for 14 days gathering of 30 plus people and urges people to maintain social distancing. Vietnam with a population around 97 million had only 417 Chinese coronavirus cases since the outbreak at the start of the year and no death. That was until the past four days when three cases emerged. The Southeast Asian country was back on high alert after the government confirmed its first community infection since April and another three cases on Sunday in the tourism hotspot of Da Nang. Let's just hope they can contain the new outbreak. <laughs> 